Only a few weeks after Atasami sent him up in a slate quarry, the engines were busier than ever taking goods and passenger trains, but with the extra work, there came problems. The engines were behind on goods contracts, which meant there had to be double headers through the valley carrying more trucks than usual. The yards were backed up with trains that were delayed because of this. This made the engines very exhausted. Early one morning, the engines were being steamed up for a hard day's work. But Stuart wasn't happy. Everything all right, youngin? said Duke. Stuart sighed. No, Grandpuff. How long will you go on like this? Trains are delayed and we are being overworked trying to keep up. We need a bigger and stronger engine. Stuart? Mind you need to think about getting another engine before we damage it. Stuart! The shed went silent. You must understand, the railway's funding is dwindling at the moment. The manager is doing all he can to keep this railway on track. Said Duke. Then Jerry spoke up. Aye, Stuart. We just have to make the best of a bad situation. I had to help Falcon and Duke double-head the other day whilst also dealing with extra shunting. Soon the manager arrived to give the day's briefing. The manager gave all the other engines their job and then turned to Duke. Duke, we will be trialling a new engine today. We bought him cheap from the War Department. And expecting him to arrive at Pilgodrid. When he arrives, take him to the fitters yard to be looked over. Yes, sir! He said confidently. Duke then puffed out of the sheds and down the main line. Soon, Duke arrived at Peel Godred Station Yard. He looked over towards the shed and found a large pannier tank engine sitting there. The workman had just finished unloading him. Ah, oh, you must be the new engine. I'm Duke, and you are? Howdy, I'm Stanley. Stanley said as he looked around, rather confused. Duke took notice of this. Excuse me? Duke said, curiously. But uh, is anything the matter? N nah, it's just your freight seems a little small. Duke was confused. Our freight? Do you mean our goods? Duke pondered as he looked around the yard. Yeah, but our freight cars are way bigger and carry heavier loads. We use them all the time in the trenches. Are you fellas really this weak? Stanley boasted. Duke was not amused. What? Nothing. Said Duke, slightly annoyed. Now, I need to take you to the fitter's yard to be looked over. And one more thing, don't call me Bud, that would never suit his grace. He said as he coupled up to Stanley. Come along, youngster. After Duke had taken Stanley to the fitter's yard, he went away to collect his picnic train. As he did, he felt deep down something wasn't right with this engine. The next morning, Jerry was taking some trucks to the yard. Stuart was meant to take them, but he was busy working at Farquhar Road and the manager had told Jerry to teach Stanley the way to shunt coaches and trucks. Last night in the sheds, Duke had been telling Jerry about Stanley. When Jerry arrived at the yards, he saw Stanley idling in a siding having a steam test. He uncoupled his goods and pulled alongside him. Oh howdy, who might you be? Stanley asked. Jerry looked at him with a frown. So you must be the new engine that arrived yesterday. That would be me. Dick told me about you and how you called us weak. Stanley rolled his eyes. If I were you, I wouldn't need to disrespect us, and certainly near Duke. 
Huh. I'm just stating facts. And besides, Duke shouldn't worry about how much he could pull. It looks like he'll retire soon anyway. Stanley said with a grin. This made Jerry very cross, but he didn't have time to argue. Soon Jerry and Stanley were shunting coaches and trucks around the yard. But things weren't going quite so well for Jerry. As much as he tried to tell Stanley that he had to be careful with the small stock, Stanley kept being too rough. I know what I'm doing, you little green cabbage. I've been working with free cars since before you were built. And what I'm doing... Jerry groaned as he watched Stanley. Well, don't you see I didn't try and help? That afternoon, Stanley marshalled some trucks into a siding when he saw Jerry pulling into the platform with coaches for Falcon's local train. Stanley had a mischievous idea. He saw the yard foreman and decided to put his plan into action. Excuse me, sir. The yard foreman turned and looked at Stanley. Are you doing anything at the moment? No. Why? Could you tell Jerry? The manager wants coaches in Platform 2 and Marshall of Freight Train in Platform 1. Last minute change. He finished. The yard foreman looked at him confused but reluctantly agreed. Excuse me. Engine. Oh, I said? Right, urgent news. The manager wants these coaches in the other platform, and a good train marshal here instead. Um, alright, but why would the manager tell you to tell me to rearrange the train? Probably a last minute change, Jerry, and besides, we wouldn't want to argue with our manager. Jerry said nothing and began rearranging the coaches. Soon Jerry was back at the yard finishing up some shunting when he heard a commotion from the station. The passengers were shouting and complaining to the station master. Oh, poor Nessie Ballor, what's that racket? The station master angrily strode over to Jerry. Watch this. Why is there a good train on platform one? What are the passengers supposed to ride in now? He boomed. Ghost train? This isn't right. What happened here, Jerry? You don't normally get things wrong. Falcon said crossly. What? This isn't my fault. I was given a message that the manager wanted the goods here and the coaches there. Then Stanley bustled in. What's wrong, little guy? We were mess up with the train arrangements? He grinned, glaring at Jerry, who was very confused. I'll be speaking to the manager about this, now the passengers will be late. Jerry, clean up this mess immediately. He ordered, leaving Jerry at a loss for words. Jerry began pulling the trucks up to the platform. While Stanley smirked triumphantly. <laughs> 